615, right. so you're good to go. Welcome, everybody, to the March 25th, 2024 Select Board meeting for the town of Rochester, which has been <clears throat> warned um, in three public places and on the website and emailed to interested parties so we can go forward first with you have the uh, <clears throat> the prior meeting minutes from march 1st the um special select board meeting minutes um which was to um increase the um the community development block grant planning grant by um ten thousand for the high school repurposing project and we approved that so i'd move to approve those Pat has to do it because I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there. Uh, oh, Pat, we Pat? see you on your phone and you I, appear I to be muted. I wasn't present. I second that. All right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. And then um, for the um, meetings, minutes for the March 11th, which I wasn't there, so that would be up to um, Me and Pat, Pat and Frank to approve those if they approve of those. I second I that. Move, I move to I move to accept the meeting minutes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. You got those. <clears throat> and one more set of minutes we've got is for the annual town meeting that was on Monday, March 4th at the high school um, auditorium. And I would move to approve those. Second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. All right. Boom. And we'll um, move on to, we have um, Jared guest tonight. <laughs> What's up? Um, well, I, we live, live up in Hawk on mm -hmm. Middle Hawk Lane, and mm -hmm. I wrote the I wrote a little um a little letter about we want to try to get Meadow Hawk Lane to be um maintained by the town rather than privately. <laughs> um, the main reason is just you know Hawk North has been taking care of it for a long time and been doing a good job, but we're here full time now um mm -hmm. and just the maintenance the overall maintenance would you know be super beneficial for us considering you know getting her to school and you know all these things i, I also know it's not a, a yes no process it's going to be you know it's going to have to be figured out along the way but um and that along obviously the, the financial aspect of it with you know inflation happening and all that things and we have already talked to the johnsons and the largoses who are also on meadowhawk lane um and they you know they are also um would like to move forward with it um but we just don't know the process and we just knew this is the first step and we want to kind of mm -hmm. um get a discussion going of what's possible and um you know, with that, aside from Upper Sparrow Hawk, it's the only other road that that I that I know of that's on Hawk that is not maintained by the town. Um, there's other town like Pine Lane going up Maple is has one house on it that's seasonal that's maintained by the town. We just don't know the history of it, but we're just kind of think it would be beneficial for um, you know for the for the people that are on there. Not also the Largosas. He's ninety. They're in and out of New York a lot. Um, but just trying to get the go to get the road maintained in a way that is uh consistent with um with the towns kind of so you looked into this um, I, right is it i've looked into some of it yes and um basically it's a board decision mm -hmm. and it would require the landowners to upgrade the road to class three standards um the town really has no interest in taking on any more roads because I'm looking to get rid of some, to be honest with you. Right. Um, like Kirkpatrick Road or yeah. Sierra up yeah. there on the hill. There's nine tenths of a mile and bingo. I want to see us uh, abandoned. There's a, a Anderson Lane up on Jerusalem Hill. There's, um, where's the other one? I'm sick of Wing Farm Road. Mm -hmm. These are roads that we'd I'd like to see us abandon them, but because they're 
they're involved with deed restrictions on some of these roads. Uh, Kirkpatrick's is a different, would be a different one because all the land is owned by one person. So that would just be an easy road to discontinue. Right. Um, roads like Wing Farm Road encompass three or four different landowners. So I'm not sure how, I haven't researched their deeds. I'd have to have a lawyer to research the deeds to find out where the where the deeds or the lot lines are and how we would have to address that if we were to discontinue. In your case, you'd have to put together a 50 foot right away. It's three rod, which is 49 feet. I don't know how that affects your property or the neighbor's property or Hawk North's property. Right. You would have to go through the process of whether or not the driveways approach to the town road was adequate and was properly culverted, if it necessary. I mean, you'd have to go through a whole review of that part of the road and build it out enough to make a decent turnaround there sure. would be the issue. I'm not sure what the cost is. We haven't looked at that, but that would be borne by you folks in order for the town to even do it. I have talked to John and he's not interested in taking on any more roads. So, so I don't know it, where the town road is private drive. It's a private drive at private drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so. from, from what I I I'd have to do a bit more as well, but most, most of it is on our it's Hawk on the left is the common land and us on the right, my our house. So right. um but I, I I one thing I don't really know is where Meadow Hawk officially ends. Is it like just the straight or does it go to the left? Or yeah, that's but, the type of thing I just need to find out. Because the way I say that is because if just the the you know, all the deeds wouldn't be necessary because most of the road is just our house. Yeah, because like, our our property line goes all the way back. Um, goes down yeah, towards, towards the Johnson. Johnsons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how that affects you know the the legal aspect of changing that. I know it's not a very big road or anything, and I have thought that when those roads were constructed up there, that one was probably constructed after all the others that was probably one of the latter ones that went in it was in 81 right? yeah so that, i don't know it's, which i think is one of the later ones yeah, yeah those roads were developed back in the early 70s some of them were in the in the mid 70s i know they were planned in the six late 60s sure. mm -hmm. that's when the access road went in was the early 70s which was constructed all on hawk property right and so <laughs> Um, those were, it was some agreement back then at the time that the town would own those roads, but I don't know why that road was left out of that, whether it came in later or what I'd have, you'd have to research that in yeah. order to find that out. We were, we were, yeah, actually I was, we were talking, I was talking with Norm yesterday and he was, he didn't know if like that was like a single plot that would, that was purchased later or like how it worked out. He's, he just, but no one really. That lot that where your house is, is the original camp lot. Mm -hmm. And that was the original, that was the lot where that road ended. Okay. And the old road used to, well, the road that's there now used to continue on and go through all the way past, um, what is that, Falcon Loop West. Okay. And that's where the old road used to go all the way out through there to Maple Hill. Wow. So, and the other road came up from Marine Hill, which was later discovered to be a town road to a certain point there. But if you look at where the four-way intersection is up there for Falcon Loop yeah. West and East, I think it is. There's a cellar hole there on the right, and that was the last house that was on there. And there's another one that's out in the woods, out beyond Hawk, that's yeah. <laughs> off that road, yeah. too. But that was the original. There used to be a pond that was right across from your house, right on the corner where Osprey Run is. There was right. a pond right there, and that's pretty much where the travel portion of that road stopped before Hawk was built. Gotcha. So, and I would imagine that camp stayed there for a number of years after Hawk was started. And I imagine those lots that went down in that side were some of the last ones to be developed, okay. I believe. 
Which actually, you know, that makes sense because um, what the cruises lived there before, but it was it's technically a, actually a private road. Um, I forget the actual name of it, but there there's actually two up there now that I think about it, and it's the one if you I don't know if you remember the cruises were there. Yeah, their house. That's actually it's not a driveway. That's actually like a road mm -hmm. to go back to their place and that's actually private too so there's something with that section so you're probably right it just being developed it was that. it was last to develop yeah. I, I wasn't sure if the road coming off the access road to the left was town road or not i don't know what the name of that is no, no, no. that's the one that goes off to cruises but there were two lot another lot beyond them and they bought it so that was the access that road was a oh, right of way to, to get that, to those lots to, to those, to those back lots, lots. yeah, yeah. Because I know those other ones mm. were all put in when the original development was built. And the only one they couldn't take and they didn't take on was that upper sparrow hop right. because of the, understandable. The, mm. the accessibility to it and how steep it was. Mm. But that was probably back in the early 70s, I would think, maybe mid 70s at the latest that they did all those roads. So the long and the short of it is the town's not anxious to take on another road, but I guess the research should be done about what the deeds say, how much, yeah. you know, what, what is actually there and what it would take to to upgrade it. And so we really have, you know, you'd have, you'd to, have numbers to play with. Whatever, sure, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's yeah. the way we should address it, I think. Yeah. And, but, and, I mean, to be honest, that's what I was just that's what I figured. I, yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. want to say. Yeah, I because I don't know what it, what would it entail. It might just be, it's just we're just trying to figure out a more cost effective way to move forward since we're planning on being here for a long time. Mm -hmm. like, right, X amount down for these three houses makes sense if it's not insanely expensive to do. Mm -hmm. I guess if it's it's just more research. And, yeah, yeah. Kind of go from there, I guess. I guess that'd be a uh, yeah, um, starting point. And John would mm -hmm. I'd add when he gets a chance and things dry out of some yeah. and he I could have him stop up there and he could look at it to see what it would entail to give you a, some rough idea of what you'd be looking at for cost to yeah. bring it up to the class three standard, which it would have to be sure. in order for the town to do that. And that would at least give you an idea of what you'd be looking at for an expense. That's that's not, I, that's I mean, that's what, yeah, that's all I'm looking for. To be honest. And, that, and obviously, I just need to relay this to the Largos and the Johnson mm -hmm. because they're not in on it. Well, yeah, the, the yeah, cost yeah, may yeah. be surprisingly much. I don't know. Yeah. You know, because you, you'd have to, re, like you said, the class three roads require a, a 50 foot right away. How many culverts? Three, three are on that? I'm not sure. And that's something that John would have to yeah. look at. Yeah. So, whether uh, not, you said a 50 foot, 50 foot right away. What exactly does that mean? It's well, it's, it's the right of way of the road, and then it would require so much lane space. Okay, that's how I figured. You know, so the, the right of way is 50 feet, but the road's in the middle of that 50 feet. Yeah. So it's like 10 feet either side would be right of way of the travel portion of the okay. road. So the road would be about 30 feet okay. wide. And I don't know what that, what your road is looking yeah, at up there. Know. It's probably. 20 or 25 yeah. maybe yeah. at the most yeah so you'd have to widen that to the standard and plus d the access and right away to the town yeah. for ownership yep yep that so, yeah, I look into that. so that would I, and I don't know how that would affect your lot lines or or if there's any yeah. you know issues with that as far as does that change your lot size i, I don't know what yeah, those yeah. things I mean, are yeah, if, if, no, 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 I guess that would, it's just some, yeah, just got to look into it. To be honest, I wouldn't yeah. really care about, you know, five feet of it taken away. Yeah, yeah, yeah but whether that. But the reality is it's a lot. Right. Yeah, it may be yeah. not worth it in the long run. Um, the other thing is if it's a deed restriction or if it makes your lot smaller in any way, if that's permissible in the development right. where, you know, I don't know how that affects yeah. that, you know, because I know those lots are, an acre maybe and or some of them are six what's that no, 1.6 1.6 five feet down yeah feet away yeah yeah, good, uh, yeah yeah so I, but i don't know the legal yeah mumble jumbo there and how that all works so um i can when the 
you know, things calm down a little bit, I'll send him up there. We we'll go up there together and look and see what it would entail and give a rough estimate. And you'd have to bring that up to standard by yeah. outside interests and <clears throat> do the town specs and go from there. One step at a time. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Hey, right. this is Robert. Yeah. Hey, Robert. Uh, hey, guys, what a beautiful evening. And and Frank, are you competing with Marvin Harvey's uh, knowledge of history? <laughs> with uh, God, I anyway. hope not. I've been here a long <laughs> Well, time. anyway, no, I, I'm talking about land. But uh, it's odd. The agenda tonight does not have the link to get into the meeting. It only has it has the uh, meeting ID and the password, but I've been in obviously in many meetings and I just click on the link and it's not it's not there. So it seems to be I don't know whether someone forgot it or. But if you go on to the uh, Rochester website, you'll notice it says uh, meeting ID and password in the same line, which is confusing yep, in that, itself that that but, will get but, you in if you go to zoom i believe you you enter that data and that will that will take you to the the, the zoom connection yeah no i i tried in all kinds of zoom uh of official mm -hmm. zoom sites and it's it doesn't work so you know i'm just saying yeah. typically there's a link and i just click on the link and you know, it, the meeting opens and everything's good. So I, I just thought I'd bring it up because there might be a number of other people that are uh, confused. No, you got other people in on Zoom? Yep. Yep. And yep. one's my husband. Yep. I really figure anything out. So. Yeah. Well, I'm maybe here. that. Well, I, I, well, Julie, I'll ask you the question. Why isn't the link on the uh, agenda of this e evening's meeting? It's always there. It's possible that it got deleted when you copy and paste a link from the Zoom to the um, agenda that we use. There's nine miles of gibberish that would confuse people if we left it there. So we always make sure that we delete it. Um, and it's very possible that maybe that got picked up this time in human error. Well, it's just something I thought it was proper to bring forth because Typically, I just click on the, uh, the 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 link and bingo bango, it's on Zoom and mm -hmm. there everyone is. But you know, I don't know. What well, you're say, in. You, you're in on the phone, so you can you can you can fine. right? Yeah, you can hear us, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I can hear you guys. Okay, okay, it's all good. It's not. It's not. Um, it's just a. Uh, I thought I would put forth to That's Julie fair. to say, well, where's the link? So. I mean, this is Pat, and I just clicked on the link, and I went right to Zoom, and then you came right up right on. So I had no problem at all tonight. Hmm. Good. Who's speaking? She just Pat said Harvey. that. Was uh, I'm sorry, who? Pat Harvey. She, she's on oh, Zoom well. tonight. And she um she was able to click on the link, so I don't know what happened with um with that with your oh, I, um you know hmm. I'm just saying I I went to the there, there's no link in in on the Rochester website as we speak in the agenda at the bottom there's no link yeah. so Patty I don't know something um, went wrong it's a, it's okay I don't want to interrupt the meeting any longer. Was included in the email, but it's not on the paper agenda, is what happened. So Pat was able to access it through her email. There's a link there, but if you go onto the website, it does not have that link. So they're both correct. Right. Okay. Right. Well, right. I, I don't know. Well, good I, thing I we know. have a phone number also, so you have other options to, to get in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's okay, but. I don't know how Patty got the link and the the agenda doesn't have the link. I, I don't understand that. No. So the, the link must have been sent uh, via right. email. So anyway, you guys continue. Okay. On the, we'll, we'll carry uh, on. Watching okay. the snow melt. Okay. Um, welcome. What's, well, what's the news from up on the hill? 
Uh, not really that good. No. Uh, for three days, she did have her dog on a leash. And now it's off again. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know if you guys did send a certified letter. Yeah, I did it. So I sent them certified and I sent them through the regular mail. The certified did come back. The regular mail did not. So she has a copy. Okay, well, recently her dog has been off the leash again. Again, chasing my car around and around as I leave and when I come back. Mm. Yesterday, it tried to bite my daughter. Mm -hmm. and another person that lives up there threw a shovel at it to stop it. Okay. You guys tell me you can't do anything. I need to go to the state police. You know what the state police are going to tell me? They're not going to come unless somebody's dead or dying. You know why? Because yeah. they've got better things to do right now. Yeah. This is a town issue. It's right here in your paperwork that you've given me. You have a constable in this town. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You have two of them. Right? One. We have one. One. We yeah. have two in book. We do, but they're not um they're not through the training, the proper training to be able to go out on they can do like traffic control and you stuff have a like dog that. Ordinance or yeah. an ordinance officer in this town, correct? That's correct. We do. Yep. And you tell me he can't go to the property anymore, correct? Right. No. No. So this is a dereliction of the town duty. We can well it's um it's a dereliction uh, it's of the a town. Dereliction duty. of the town you, duty. You have a no. constable. No. You should be able to contact the constable when I come to you, mm -hmm. and he should be able to go up there with his ordinance officer and take care of this issue. I could have grabbed that dog tonight and brought it down here because it's not on a leash, because mm -hmm. it was chasing around my car, biting it while I'm coming down here. It okay. chased my daughter down the road and tried to bite her. It nipped my oldest daughter that you were here mm -hmm. for when mm -hmm. she got bit on the face. Mm -hmm. Something has to happen. I have five violations of that leash not being on a leash. Dog chased my five-year-old down a hill when she was coming home to go to the bathroom from the playground up there, trying to bite her. If it wasn't for my wife, it would have bit her. Okay. That dog is a biting dog because it's a herding dog. Mm -hmm. When it's on the property up there, it thinks it's its property. Yeah. And anything around there that's running, it tries to hurt. A car, a person, doesn't matter. Throw snow with a shovel and it bites my oldest daughter's hand. There is a leash law in this town. You have it right here in your paperwork. Yep. Yeah. Somehow, it's not my responsibility to have to call the state police to go up there and take care of this. It is a town issue. And last time you told me it was private property, it's right here in your paperwork. doesn't matter if it's on private property or not. It's a town ordinance. Okay. All right. Well, it's, um, I have communicated with the Brian, the owner of the property up there, and he's... Aware of it, we've I've communicated with him too. And yeah. He's aware of it. He's aware yeah. of this right here. Down here too. We sent, yeah. we sent her. He's aware of this one right here. Day. This is more violations on the ones that already have three yeah. days. She put that dog fine. on a leash, for yeah. and now it's off again. We, that fine's not going to do any good. I think mm -hmm. what we got to do is go through the state officer on this type of thing and how maybe we address it. So let's let's call the the state. Uh, game wardens on this possibly and see what if it what are actions we can take because I don't I don't really know what to do here I'm not I don't I'm not trying to be right I, I know I'm, because I'm, my I want to help help you through because this is crazy I'm going to go to my lawyer and I'm going to sue the town because you guys can't yeah, do anything it's the health department so, yeah. Is yeah. that what it you is? You have See? the ordinance officer. You have constables. Right. You have the people to yeah. figure this out. But we need to figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. finally, you're, so let's, but, you told yeah. me, my daughter, last time you couldn't do nothing in this town. I'm here telling you this town needs to goddamn do something now. Because mm -hmm. I'm sick of getting bit in my ass. Okay. So we'll, yesterday it bit me in the ass. So we'll uh, we'll see what okay. we can. 
come up with on that. We reach out to the sheriff too. And yeah, yeah. I mean, they're yeah, well, then, yeah, he's, he's that made one. aware of it. He tried that one. That doesn't do nothing. He's so well. Well, we, 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 we can bone him up again. I mean, that's not an issue. I I think that we you know, have when to it started, be. The only reason she sent out some stupid letter saying that somebody was harassing her is because she was thinking it's Brian harassing her. I'm the one that's doing this because that dog keeps nipping at me and biting me and biting my kids. And I am right. damn sick of it. Right. Well, that shouldn't be happening. There's no question about that. So we'll try to do what we can do and, mm -hmm. and go from there. Thank I mean, you. that's all we can do. The last time I was supposed to have a follow up and ain't nobody called me since the last time I was down here. The only reason I could assume that they got a letter was because they were on the leash for three days. So mm -hmm. please, you have my information. Yes. Call me and tell we, me what we're doing with this. Okay. We'll let we'll yeah. let you know. Mm -hmm. We will. I'll I'll see to that myself. Because my five year old oh, gets bet. Yeah. Yeah. States yeah. laws. It's right. not going to be good. I've so, got them. Yeah. I've got so the we'll figure laws. out where we yeah. can go. It with draws this blood. Because it's yeah. It's going to be problems. It's an issue. Well, and if they come after me, yeah. then I'm gonna come after the state, the town, and we'll just be a big horrendous hoorah. Yeah. Because we'll go back to 2011 when my other daughter got bit. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of town people thinking that they're gonna get away with shit. Really, really sick of it. Well, thanks for bringing it up and pushing it because that's what it's gonna take to. You know, bring it to a boil and get some. Yeah, well, I'm boiling. Yeah, as yeah, you can okay. see. yeah I can yeah. see. Yeah. Please keep me yeah. in the loop. Okay. I, yes. I know you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We will. I know I'll you make... don't want any more of this shit. Yeah, yeah. you were there last time, so you don't care. Well, right along with Marvin Harry, which ain't here. Larry Strauss was here too the last time. Yeah. He didn't even have nothing to say either. So, yeah. have a good night. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's, um, that's the project. Mm -hmm. So the certified letter came back. She didn't accept that. So there's yeah. no proof that she got the um the other yeah, mail either. Yeah. So that needs to be like the sheriff should impose yeah. the letter. Hand deliver. Okay. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. And get a signed receipt for it to make sure she's aware. And then law enforcement bond uncompliance yeah. i think is important and, here and just so like in this situation you know jeff he just doesn't have the training like there's a required there's this big course right. of that you have to do and he just he doesn't have that so i understand that yeah, I, I think there is an issue that possibly the game warden could be involved with this with an un Leash dog. Okay, I think it's the health department. And it, yeah, maybe under the health department, but they might pass it to the game warden or something the because hand delivery by the sheriff is the way to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's something that you have to, we have to do to make sure that certified I letter is. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference to him. Right. Uh, excuse me. Well, it'll cover yeah. the base for the town. Though. Yes, Martha. I just, I'm sorry, I don't remember, I know that gentleman was here maybe a month or two ago, but I don't remember his name. I just want to make sure I have the, the one I was just speaking to you about the dog biting problem. John Lambert. John Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T. Is that it? Yeah, yeah okay. I believe so. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. Yeah. Hey, uh, guys, can I make a comment? No. What do you got, Robert? Well, um, I don't know John Lambert. Maybe I know him to see, but my concern is the future of the children and their love for dogs. Uh, I've had friends with the, when I was in kindergarten and you know, grammar school who were bitten by dogs, and they were petrified to be near any dog. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's almost about John's children that the town needs to think about. And John, I have to, to commend him because he's bringing a, yeah. a good thing no. forward. You know, no, I, I really believe totally that. Critical. Yeah, it's a very definitely a critical situation. It's just mm -hmm. escalating and it's not, um, and that person involved is not proved very easy to deal with. So it's, um, we're just- Well, I, I'll just share them. this with you. Uh, my two dogs, Lucy and Ethel, when I would arrive at a gathering or a party, they would 
the first thing they would do is go check in on all the young children and make sure they were, that's a fact. They would check in on the children to yeah. make sure they were okay. Yeah. Not all dogs are that way. Yeah, not all dogs are like that though. These um this is um yeah, this is not a not a good situation. So we're all gonna Well I think I think it. it'll all get yeah. I think it'll all get worked out. One way or another. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um got that. So the next item on the agenda is we have a um Outside consumption liquor license for Maple Soul LLC. I guess that's so they can serve on their porch. Yeah, I don't see. Any yeah, there. I'd move to approve that. Second. I second. All oh, okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. That's um. I need, just need to approve it, not sign it. And we also have. A uh, tobacco license from Village Grocery and Liquor Incorporated. And um, I would move to approve that. Lucky I to second. Have this All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we'll get that. Nope. I'll find them there. Uh, no. Nope, they don't have to be there. Okay. This needs to be uh, officially. Not um, anymore. They used to be. Then we have a second class liquor license also from the Village Grocery and Liquor Incorporated. So I would move to approve that. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. And we have a um, tobacco license from the Skip Mart. <laughs> and I'd move to approve that. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we also have a second class liquor license application from the skip marks. And so I'd move to approve that. Boy, we got a pile of them here. <laughs> yes. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Shoot. Here we go. Um now for something completely different. We have the February Treasurer's report. Um and Thank you for putting that together again. Yep. And I would move to approve that. I can second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Aye. Okay. That one would do something. Yes. And do we have anyone on Zoom from the library tonight? No. Nope. And um we talked some about the highway. They were busy this weekend, weren't they? Uh, yeah. yeah. Had a number of breakdowns. Yeah. Um, hopefully they'll get them back together. John was going to do his repairs. Um, he sprung the plow frame on the International. The the 550 went down again. Some uh, Something with the transfer case let go which was hopefully Greens will cover it because it was part of the job that <laughs> we did before. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what, there's going to be a go around with that, I'm sure. And But hopefully it will get back together and we won't have another two-footer to no, deal with no, and for work. at least another year. <laughs> or another month, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, let's hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is, um, Terry's not on there, I presume, from no. the utilities zone. Is, um, is Jeff on there? No. He's still recuperating? Yeah. How about some grant updates? Got a little bit of grant updates. Um, we received, um, our funds, as you know, from Ben and Jerry's for the AED. I've purchased the AED and we have received that in-house. Um, it came with a case and I think we're going to put it out here somewhere once mm -hmm. I get a man with a drill thing mm -hmm. wall, you know? Is that a hint? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> or I could ask my lovely husband to do it too. I felt like this room was um, more so accessible. We is, that thought, like, is that where this, you want to keep it? You want to keep it in this building? We thought that it would be more central, more accessible. Um, what do you, like, is there any well, thoughts? I, uh, that's, I was concerned about that when we went ahead with this. And where do we keep this thing? We kind of didn't want it in our room because 
we're kind of full in our room and it's a kind it's a rather big yeah i think you've seen it box yeah, that seen. goes on the wall um so just somewhere out of you know out of the way even like under that coat rack or over there just somewhere mm. where people aren't going to like walk into it and yeah because yeah. it sticks out quite a bit so okay we'll want to think we'll, we'll long look and hard at what about kind of crack it does it I don't know. Can you look at it with me after? I think there's like four screws that are just okay. going in the back yeah. of them. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look at it Wednesday when I come in. Okay, that sounds okay. good. Thank you. Yep. Um, so we purchased that. That'll probably cost the town, I think, about maybe $280. I added, so it was on sale. Um, and so there's $500 off. And then I added the pediatric pads as well. So we were just over the $1,500. Mm. Um, so that was pretty good. So thank you, Janice, for doing the work on that. Um, also for the FEMA, the two category C's that we had sent that I'd sent in, um, it's at the last phase right now, the final stage of approval. So we should receive our reimbursement for those two within the next two to four weeks, which is awesome. Um, the last one, which was the debris. No, that's the North hollow site. That one's still under review and trying to do a mitigation thing. And that's, well, that's, really going that's on moved that. into a lot bigger project yeah, than what we anticipated. They're not being as supportive as I. Well, thought. that's that's the normal because it's an upgrade in the culvert system. Well, yeah, but they had agreed to it at the beginning, right? And but, things have changed, so now they've sort of connected me with someone else, and hopefully we can maybe get an additional grant to cover some of that. So we're kind of in the thick of it with that one. Um, and then also. You might have to correct me on this one. We received um, the agreement and advance notice to proceed for the BRIC 22 grant, um, which is support with the LEMP that we need. LHMP, you're right, that we need to update. Um, so that's in the process too of just getting the final signed documents there. Okay. Um, and then my last thing that I would just like to say is um, it was brought to my attention that some people were questioning, um, I guess I'll just say had some questions with regards to grants and where the money goes, whether it go in the general fund or where we put this money. Mm -hmm. um, and they're calling their friends and asking, and I would just like to openly invite people, if you have questions about a grant, um, suggestions or don't understand something, please feel free to call the town office at any time. I'm happy to talk about it and answer any questions um, that people may have. So, that's it. Hey, may I make a comment? This is Robert Franks. Go for oh. it, Robert. Yep, yep, we hear uh, you. Did, okay, that's cool. Uh, has, any, has anyone in the meeting, or I don't know what you guys do, but have they read the Vermont Digger uh, announcing what's coming out of Washington D.C.? Um, I mean, it's a great it's a it's a great article, and it defines you know monies. So Kristen just said there's somebody you know some neighbor calling friends. No, but the person she's referring to is who uh, who is speaking, and that's Robert Franks. I just, it was told to me that we, the, this high school or the whatever it's called down there is getting a $2.3 million grant. Well, I, all I did was follow the money to see how it was going to be processed. So Kristen, if you have a question regarding my concern about it and the purpose of it, how it's flowing, where it came from, you can just call me. You oh, I don't need call to call me. you because you made it very obvious that day on the phone that you had received numerous phone calls that people were asking you where the money was going. Well, they and read I the article. So, so I that... just contact no, Kristen. Okay. I contacted you to say where will where, where will that money be placed in the town of Rochester? It, it was just a question. It wasn't a a personal mm -hmm. attack. It was yeah. like yeah. Bernie yeah. Sanders approved. Bernie Sanders approved $2.3 so million dollars for the school it's a, repurposing. It's, it's, and all I said, what account is that going? And you said, oh, it'll go into the general fund. Oh, no, that's not what I said, Robert. Don't say I said that. That is not what I said. Yeah. I told oh, you that really? we had 
documentation that we were uncertain. A lot of this is a CDBG grant. Um, in the past, when I've worked with CDBG grants, we've had to put the money in a special account. I told you I hadn't received any paperwork or anything on this yet, so I wasn't sure well, what this looked like. Or any money. That, this is still a potential. Well, this is no, it, it, it's potential. all good. I'm just saying that the news was out before I called Kristen in the Vermont Digger. It was very, very factual with the numbers from the senators our U.S. senators, it was very factual. So people were just, they're like, you know, and I'm not, I received phone calls and it's like, hey, listen, I, I don't know anything about the repurposing and what the purpose of the repurposing is. I just said, I would, you know, I would just if you follow the money. That, redirect those phone calls to the phone. I would just recommend that you redirect those phone calls to the town clerk's office where they'd have the most current oh, information well, well, no, about that. No, I do that. I do. I do that all the yeah. time. The hey, problem is yeah. pe people are, uh, they're, they don't want to expose themselves to being concerned about $2.3 million, which I think is great. I think it's a great thing that happened. It's just, if 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 uh, someone on the select board deposited two point three million dollars into my personal account, I'd say number one, thank you, and then they'd say, well, Robert, what are you going to do with it? Oh, it's a logical yeah. question. <laughs> no, Kristen, Kristen, it wasn't. I I knew I was upset, but on the other hand, the information had already come forth, and I was it's, just saying, so it's, wow. It's so I guess um, stay tuned because all this is dependent upon um, whether or not the town decides to, to purchase this building. This is just more information that would help to um, inform the public on, on, on the vote about whether or not the town should move forward with this project. So this is not a... Right. No, not I, a I understand that. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. So, but... so that money is not right. well, going... We, we... I'm sorry, we can end the conversation, but I'm just saying, wow, 2.3 million coming into the Rochester. I've been, I've been fighting for the Rochester School, the Stockbridge School, the Ro the Bethel School, for eight years, and all of a sudden, so it's not something that just came out of the blue. It's 2.3 yeah. million dollars. That's it, a lot um, of money. Yeah, but it's not necessarily. For the school, this is for a whole separate project. So, um, well, to be continued, I suppose. Well, the the, the contingency of the of the continuance is is like what 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 what's, that's the question. What will happen with the money? So it's a, it's a future question, I suppose. At this point, yes, yes, exactly. Okay, well, let's leave it at that then. Yep. All right. No, but it is exciting, isn't it? Well, yeah, the most important thing is to is to do mm -hmm. something for uh, education and economic development yep. in all of our towns. Other, yep. If you don't have if, if you don't have number one, if you don't have a good school system, no young families and children are going to come here. Yeah. If you don't have that, you're not going to have economic development. And so the town will die. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds, and, and if it well, is. Let's, a, let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I'm, all right. I'm, all right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. yep. Um, does anyone else in Zoom or on the phone have anything they'd like to address tonight? Everybody is muted and seems to be all set. I move right. to adjourn. Um, Pat. Oh, Pat. Oh, Pat has something. Move to. All right, I'll second that motion. Wait, wait a second. Quick question. Yes. Um, under before you get to adjournment, um, under old business, it says LHMP, and I'm not can't remember what that yeah, is. That, yeah, Kristen had uh, touched on that, and part of the um, um stay there. Just yeah, because of how the process. Do, uh, yeah, that's the, the local hazard yeah. mitigation um, policy. Okay. We do need to yeah. Else. 
that will come up. This probably is something that should be announced too, right here. Ah, uh, I think this is part of it. Yeah. Yeah, this is all the finance. You want to talk about that? Uh, I don't know much about it. It's just a, it? it's it's just assistance package for anyone with a buried fuel, uh, tank, uh, underground storage or above ground storage outdoors that they're looking to, um, lessen any environmental impacts of leakage and all that. And there is a program available for anyone that has a buried fuel tank that services your home with heating oil and so forth. Um, there is assistance in removal. From the Agency of Natural Resources. So they're trying yeah. to clean those underground tanks up. Yeah. So it's just a FYI. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, yes. is that um, part, that's part of this LHMP local hazard mitigation? No, it's no, separate it's not. from that. It is addressing hazards, yeah. So this this grant that that Frank was just uh, talking about came from the Agency of Natural Resources. Agency? Yeah, it's not so much a, a grant per se as it's a program that will offer assistance to um, individuals. It's not a, a grant to the town. Okay, so it's it's a program of uh, of um, providing assistance to remove um, underground oil tanks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Yep. Hey, may I may I make another comment uh, about the um, storage tanks? Well, I don't know who came up with the idea about burying storage tanks. That was a disaster fifty years ago. But no, I just want to uh, clarify in the article that I'm proposing for people to read from the Vermont Digger is that the two point three million dollars is under the USDA. I'm like, wh what is that? So it goes to the remediation of oil tanks, and then it also goes to... Uh, no, that's a, it's a separate. Um, the oil tanks, that's a whole separate separate program. No, do 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 yeah. I understand that. But it's confusing, because why is the USDA, uh, in the article that the Vermont Digger put forth, uh, mentions the USDA was uh, uh, attached to the two point three million dollars. I'm like, what? What does the USDA? How does that work? They're pretty popular. The same question. Yep. yep. <laughs> I, I I don't know. That's um. That's just the mechanisms that the senators have to access money. I guess that's yeah. one of their yeah. pots of money they can they can put dibs on, and that's um that was the one that worked, I guess. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No. That, <laughs> yeah, Dune. That was a good answer. Yeah. No. You know. Right. But, yeah, but I would. I, I seriously, and this is the last thing I'll say, is that everyone should read that article. Uh, I think it was uh, Monday a week ago in the in the in the Vermont Digger. Vermont Digger. Very precise. Actually, yeah. it was on page two of the Herald last week as well. The very same article. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I I was uh, I was sent the article from the Vermont Digger. Anyway, we got it. We got it. So Frank has got something here. Um, that he wants to talk about it. This is the the statement of work for the two rivers from two rivers about the uh, capital budget and oh, they're gonna uh, program it. services and they, they want to be involved and it's they've sent us a preliminary here. They're mm, coming next meeting. And they're gonna come next meeting. Next meeting. Um so Pat, you, <clears throat> me and Dune, you should at some time read through this statement of work so we have an idea of what they're Mm -hmm. Going to propose for our capital budget plan, which we need to get on in order to accept any grant monies and all that. So mm -hmm. it's something that's important that we need to do. So that'll be for the next meeting, March eighth. So just want to April, April eighth. Sorry, April 8th. <laughs> yeah, 8th. jump ahead here. It's one of the April. Yeah, yeah. I think the eighth. They they've listed it here as in their letter. It's on the eighth. Yeah. 
Um, okay. So we'll need to just to go through it. So yeah, you have to get in and read it. I haven't read it yet myself, but we'll. It needs to be done. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, Pat had made a motion to adjourn. But I would um, second that motion. All in favor? All right. Bye. Bye.